My name is Zachary McNaughton, and I am not a professional angler. I've been fishing for over 20 years, and the one thing that these years have taught me most is that I have a lot to learn. So let's meet some of Vermont's true master anglers, and together we'll discover some fishing techniques and explore the many species that this great state has to offer. So we're heading to Southern Champlain today uh, to meet up with Vermont State biologist Sean Good. He's uh, got an interesting bite going on right now with um, with sheep's head or freshwater drum, and uh, we're gonna go check that out. It's mid-May right now, beginning of May really, and uh, these fish are stacked up in pre-spawn locations, just feeding like crazy uh, until they go into spawn mode. And um, he says he's marking them by the hundreds. One, two, three, four, five, six, one up high. Um, I'm pretty excited to see if that's true. So uh, we'll catch you on the water. This episode is brought to you in part by Easy Cam Posts and the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department. So uh, today we're here on Southern Lake Champlain, we're fishing for freshwater drum. It's uh, early May and these things are uh, starting to stack up at some pretty predictable locations. So if you're looking to find freshwater drum in the spring, it's actually fairly simple. Uh, in the spring, as soon as the temperature gets up about uh, 45 degrees or so, they start moving out of their deeper water winter areas. And they start congregating on kind of a month-long feeding binge before they start spawning in June. And the places they like to feed are always adjacent to or along bluffs and ledges. Rocky shorelines that have kind of a little short bluff or cliff that drops very quickly. Um, almost a vertical drop down into the water that goes you know anywhere from 15 to 30 feet. If you can find a ledge or a shoreline that drops straight down has rock on the shore, rock on the bottom that's going to hold zebra mussels and other things like that, um, that's important. The second compo component of that is that there should be some kind of current. And it doesn't even have to be like a river type current. It can be wind generated current. But if you're out on a day where you see the wind is blowing and it's pushing the water along a rock face and you're, you've got the right depth, that's a good place to start targeting and looking for these drum. They like to orient in that current and feed on uh, fish and plants and snails that are being washed along the edges of those rocks. And uh, one of the preferred actual food items for these drum, these freshwater drum are zebra mussels, which are attached to the rocks on the bottom. And the way we're targeting them today is by using a, a blade bait. This is a, a very thin piece of metal with kind of a weighted keel or belly towards the head. Uh, that puts out a lot of vibration when you rip it up off the bottom. So what we're doing is we're attaching our line right to this blade bait and we're uh, fishing completely vertically. We're dropping our lure right over the side of the boat all the way to the bottom in anywhere between 18 and 30 feet of water. And when our line goes slack and our, this blade bait hits the bottom, we tighten up our line, close the bale on our rod and reel, and then we give it a couple of good quick upward snaps with the rod really make that uh, blade bait vibrate and you'll feel it coming through the line and the uh, and the rod in your hands. After two or three upward snaps we're dropping our rod tip back down until the line goes slack again and we're just holding it on semi slack line so that blade bait lays on the bottom. That vibration draws these freshwater drum into the area um, that pulls them in for from uh, a long ways away. Go. Look at that. That is a beauty right there. Wow, what a fish. And That's think, a trophy fish. No, nobody's any. targeting these. I mean, like, the, no. We're marking a hundred unders right now. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, there's one. Nice. He hit it just as I paused it. 
This one is uh, about the maximum size that I ever go, which is about a 3 8 ounce blade bait. But I'm more uh, commonly downsized to a quarter ounce. I'm not using this one anymore because I broke the hooks actually on a drum. But here's two different styles and sizes of blade baits. This one is a quarter ounce, and this one is actually, I believe this one is a half ounce. And I just lost one earlier that was in between at 3 eighths of an ounce. So I was ripping it several times off the bottom. And then I just let it back down to the bottom until it went slack. Oh, so you're laying it in the in the. Yep, on I'm the dropping bottom. it all the way to the bottom and then tightening it up just enough for it to come off. Then give it two or three good rips and then lay it down and then lift it till it comes tight again and just hold it steady. Okay. And then he just hit it when it was sitting steady. Wow. They fight so hard. I know. I, I love the fight. They're like smallmouth bass just on steroids. Up. Yeah. yeah. They're so much fun. They're one of the biggest, hardest fighting fish, in my opinion, on Lake Champlain that is completely unutilized. Yeah. Now, are um, are these fish native to Champlain? Absolutely, yeah. Yep. Yep, they are a native species. So they're only found in a few Vermont lakes. They're not... Um... They're only found in Champlain. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, that's the cool thing about Lake Champlain. It has a fish community that is unique. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yep. That is <laughs> That's what I was talking about. So all I'm doing is I'll, I'll show you. I just let it hit, hit down here to the bottom. That line out. Okay, yeah, so I'm on bottom. Right, so once you're on bottom, so I tighten it up like this till I feel it come off. Yep. And then I just kind of give a couple rips like this. Yep. So you really feel that vibration. Oh yeah. And then just kind of drop it down till it goes slack and then lift it up so it's just a few inches off the bottom because they're mostly bottom feeders. And then I just hold it, maybe give it a little jiggle, you know, and then rip it again. There's not a lot of, you know, a lot, not a lot to it. It's, yeah. it's pretty basic fishing. It's important with these drum because of how big they are and how powerful they are and the fact that you're fishing in uh, an area that has fairly good current to be set upright with your rod and reel. So what I'm using here today is just a, a long spinning rod uh, with a with a reel spooled with um, 10 pound fluorocarbon. I like the fluorocarbon because it's a little bit more abrasion resistant. We're fishing around rocks and zebra mussels where you tend to get a lot of nicks in your line. So having a good quality line, 10 pounds or heavier, is uh, really important. If you're gonna use braid, that's fine, but I would put a fluorocarbon leader onto the end of the braid. Yeah, I mean, these fish are just fantastic fighters. I can't say, I know I said that like 15 times, but. <laughs> The sport of this It, it is. can't be overstated. Um, and, you know, I, I could probably be pretty safe in saying that of the 80,000 plus fishermen, you know, licensed anglers in Vermont, you know, only a small, small percentage of them have oh. ever experienced this. And it doesn't have to be that way. The rod itself, um, is important. You want a fairly long and limber rod. So I'm using one here that's seven feet long. It's a medium heavy action rod, but it's got a soft or a fast action tip. And that's important for a couple of reasons. The medium heavy rod itself, the lower end of the blank, um, has a lot of uh, power and force. And so these fish, we're using fairly small lures with light hooks, but you need to drive that uh, those hooks into the mouth uh, of the fish. If you look at the mouth parts of a drum, they are very thick and meaty. They use those uh, lips to pick the zebra mussels and clams and crayfish off the bottom. And uh, you really need to get a good hook set or else they will pull out. It's really important once you've set a hook into a fish to make sure that you've got your drag set properly. Oh. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Come on, sir. You want it tightened down enough so that on the hook set you don't strip line or else you won't get that hook driven into the fish. But you also want it loose enough so that when uh, the fish is on and you're starting to fight it, it can pull drag. Uh, you can always adjust it immediately after a hook set, but you want to make sure that you do that because these fish are so big and powerful. They have a really, really wide and deep body and a lot of girth through the belly. And they use that size and shape of their body and the current to their advantage in terms of fighting against you. So if you don't give them some play with a slightly loose drag and let them take some line, they're just going to snap you right off. Zebra mussel right on the front hook of my lure. That's what the drummer eating. That's a pretty small meal. I mean, uh, yeah, they must be eating quite a few they of eat those. Them by the thousands every day. Oh, oh, oh double, double header. Nice double header. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, oh. Going the opposite direction. Oh, that's good. That's fortunate <laughs> right now. You guys stay away from each other. I'm ready. Oh, look at that. Chubby. Oh. Oh, you might have your oh jet. Look at the size oh of that my thing. God. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. I was trying to make it way over. <laughs> that is beautiful. Kind of a small one, actually. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> this is such a disappointing fish. It's still bigger than any bass I've ever caught, but you know. You started telling me earlier about how long would you say this bite lasts? The bite will last uh, through May. Yeah. Um, once they're. Once they start moving towards their spawning grounds up onto the kind of the big flats up off the edge of the channels and concentrating in groups. Whoa. Um, you can't find them along the rocks anymore, but uh, after the spawn, you get back into July and August, they will be back into these, you know, similar areas on rocks, but more spread out, not concentrated in specific locations like this. They, they really start to roam a lot. Look at the girth on this. Back to belly. It's insane. 30 and a quarter. 17, seven. <laughs> 17, seven. <sighs> wow. Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.